Uh, good afternoon. We're here again today to update you regarding the city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this has not been easy. We have been at home for months now. We we're wearing masks, I hope. We all should be when we're in public places. Uh, we've sacrificed a lot, but we have accomplished a great deal by working together on this. We've helped ensure the safety of our neighbors, our, our family, our friends, and ourselves. So this is a goal that when we look back, we will know that we've accomplished something very significant. And of course, here in Nashville, we're fortunate because the number of COVID-19 cases certainly is with us, but it's less than in a lot of other places. Right now, we have about 677 documented COVID-19 cases in Nashua. And unfortunately, we've had about 37 people die from the disease. But other communities around us, other states, have had far more as a proportionate basis. Manchester's had more than twice as many as us. Lowell and Lawrence, four or five times as many. A part of this is due to everything that we're doing together, as I mentioned. Uh, we have a huge team effort here. We have our public health department, our emergency management, the people working here in City Hall, and we're gonna describe some of what's been going on. But of course, much of it is due to you. The most of it is due to you because you've been exercising caution and going, going out and staying at home and taking the precautions that we all uh, know are necessary. Because we know what you want is for us to use a fact-based approach based upon science in deciding how to proceed. What you need, of course, is safety, health, and security. And what you deserve is for us to be straightforward and honest with you about what's going on. So right now, we are continuing to be careful and continuing to urge very caution, as I've said. Uh, Massachusetts and New Hampshire have done a good job in, in containing and s attacking the virus, but we've seen in other states, Florida, Arizona, Texas, which opened up very quickly, tried to get back to normal more quickly than they should have. There's been a reemergence of the virus. I just looked on, the, on this, this morning. In Florida, they announced another 10,000 new cases uh, in that state. Arizona's suffering uh, a great deal, and, and, and Texas is not far behind. That's what certainly we do not want to happen here. So as we, uh, as we look forward towards uh, the future, we're trying to gradually, consistent with safety and with security, open up uh, City Hall to public service, to the service of you, the members of the public. The first step that we've taken is this past Monday, uh, the 6th of July, we opened up the City Hall to vehicle registration. These are new registrations or people that buy new cars or accepting a transfer of a vehicle. Now, if you are trying to renew your registration on a car that you've, you have owned, that can all be done by mail. So for those who need new car registrations or want to transfer a vehicle, you come here to City Hall at, at 8 o'clock in the morning when we open, and you're given an appointment slip as to what time to come back that day to get, your, get service. What we've done, and you're going to hear more of the details, is we've moved automobile registration up to the third floor and done some temporary construction up there so people are spaced apart. We take five people at a time to register their vehicles, and then there are five people spaced out in the hallway that are uh, waiting. In addition, we are providing other services by appointment only, assessing services, uh, city clerk services, marriage licenses. Those need to be done by appointment, so you call either assessing or the city clerk in the case of the, the marriage licenses to set up an appointment. One thing that we know we have coming is the two elections, first in September for the state primary and then in November for the state and national general election. The state has authorized everyone to use absentee ballots in order to vote in both of those elections, September and November. And we are encouraging you to exercise that 
that, that option. First of all, you can uh, get your ballot in advance, mail it in at your convenience as long as it's before election day. Number two, you don't have to go to a group setting like uh, the, the uh, polling place uh, in your various wards. So we, we are encouraging people to, to exercise the opportunity to do absentee voting as much as possible. One decision that has been difficult for the city uh, having to do with this summer is we made the decision not to open the swimming pool. So we have swim three swimming pools in Nashua. Each of them has a capacity of about 240 kids and they tend to be very full during the summertime. But we know that this is a great opportunity to be a, what they call a super spreader, that if any of the kids in the pool have the virus, it could spread to many others. And we've seen that occur in other locations around the country. Not, not just swimming pools, but at parties and uh, beach events, things like that. So we considered narrowing the number of kids that could come in uh, with uh, only, only adults involved, but we know that most kids don't come to pools with an adult. Uh, in addition, it's still in a pool setting, it's very difficult to enforce uh, the, the social distancing that young kids certainly are very resistant to. And in addition, the splash and the, all the spray in the, in the air from the, from the water in the pool uh, creates another opportunity, a bigger opportunity for the spread of the virus. So we have made the difficult decision, despite the fact that many kids use the pool to cool off in the summer, to have a good time, to favor our, their security and our, our safety, our community's health, uh, at least this summer, uh, over opening the pools. But that was a, a difficult decision. Now I mentioned that we are moving towards opening, we've, we've partially opened and are, we'll be taking additional steps towards opening City Hall. Again, we're gonna base those decisions on the facts, the science, uh, as we learn more about the virus. I wanted to say that the people in here in City Hall, and of course they often go unrecognized because they're not out on the street responding to a police call or fire call or not working directly with the public, uh, uh, public health. Uh, they have worked very hard to provide the opportunity to open to continue to provide city services during the months of this pandemic. And so I wanna thank everyone in City Hall, and there are many departments, IT, administrative IT, information technology, administrative services, certainly our city treasurer, uh, David Fredette, uh, and his staff in automobile registration. Everybody has worked very hard to continue to serve you as well as we possibly can uh, during this pandemic. So before, so my, I will come back. Uh, there, oh, there's one thing, other thing I wanted to tell you about. We are, we are continuing to encourage people to do testing as much as they possibly can. Uh, there is a clinic coming up on Thursday. And if you want to get tested, anybody who, really, who wants to can get tested. You need to schedule an appointment. And you do that by calling our COVID-19 hotline. That is... 589-3456. And that will connect you directly to the Department of Health, our health department, public health, and for, with them you can make an appointment. Before I'm going to introduce you to Kim Kleiner, who is Director of Administrative Services, to tell you more about what's going on here in City Hall. But before I conclude, I wanted to remind you to please, please continue to wear your, ma your face coverings or your masks when you go out. The science, and this is becoming more and more established as time goes on, the science shows us, shows us that the masks are very effective in preventing the spread, both in terms of protecting the mask wearer from the uh, potentially being infected by virus that's uh, in the air, or and if people are not symptomatic, don't know they have the disease, it prevents them from spreading it to others. So, Let's continue to wear our mask, let's continue to be careful, and let's continue to keep our community safe. So now I, I'm going to introduce Kim Kleiner, Director of Administrative Services, who oversees many of the departments here at City Hall. 
to tell you a little bit more about what's going on. Good afternoon, and thank you, Mayor Donches. Um, the Administrative Services Division uh, has played an integral role in providing city divisions and departments with the tools and the resources needed to continue serving our residents throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of these departments are behind the scenes, are here within City Hall, but they're crucial to uh, maintaining the operations of our city. During the initial closing back in March, our information technology team did a remarkable job providing equipment for all our city staff to effectively continue operations while working remotely. Remote access licenses for both the internal systems and the city phones were deployed uh, quickly and efficiently, many in just a few days. Over 1,400 internal requests have been answered by our IT team, IT team since March. IT also developed a system for public meetings to continue under the governor's order, allowing important legislation to be acted upon in a timely manner. The GIS team was very involved in the city's in initial response to COVID-19 Working with the Emergency Operations Center, the team quickly created a website to be a resource for maps and information relating to public access and services throughout the greater Nashville region. This important information at this early point in the response included what was open, what was closed, what was impacted, municipal offices and municipal services, medical facilities, grocery stores, child care, schools, public transportation, food pantries, and alternative school lunch programs. This data was researched and mapped by the GIS team and linked to the city web page. Our division also coordinated with the Emergency Operations Center in the formation of a supply unit responsible for procuring the supplies and personal protective equipment necessary to protect all city workers. The supply unit researched the market to guarantee the safest products were procured while remaining cost effective in dealing with very challenging delivery times. The supply unit held weekly calls with divisions, maintained crucial inventory levels, and facilitated delivery to each city division. Assisting the Community Distribution Task Force, the supply unit procured bulk community orders for many smaller nonprofit Nashua organizations. This allowed them to benefit from the lower price points offered for larger quantities of supplies and PPE. Most recently, our team assisted the United Way, Great American Downtown, and the Chamber of Commerce in bulk ordering for Nashua businesses. This allowed small Nashua businesses to secure lower pricing during a challenging economic crisis and to open their businesses safely to the public. Internally, human, the Human Resources Department provided important updates to city policies in order to manage and effectively respond to this unprecedented public health crisis and comply with state and federal legislations and regulations. The Administrative Services Division also took advantage of the closure of city buildings to make necessary improvements within the buildings. A sprinkler system was installed in the Court Street building. Repairs, painting, and general building maintenance was completed at various facilities. Working with a safety task force established by the Emergency Management and National Public Health, we evaluated all city buildings, identified the necessary building modifications, and procured adequate sanitation and protection supplies to ensure employee, employee and public safety. When residents visit the city facilities that are reopening, 
they will notice some changes. Visitors and staffs will be asked to wear face covering while in public areas of the building. The facilities have been modified to promote physical distancing with some of the furniture removed or spaced further apart. Protective barriers have been installed where needed and employee health screenings will take place at all city facilities. Three major customer service areas within City Hall were identified as requiring additional modifications. During the next few months, visitors will notice construction in the motor vehicle registration, the tax, the assessing, and the city clerk offices. These changes will allow increased functionality while incorporating important COVID-19 safety recommendations to ensure the protection of our employees and our visitors. I would like to thank the dedicated sta city staff within Human Resources, Risk, Information Technology, Purchasing, GIS, and Assessing for their continued support to our city departments uh, and our residents and this hard work during this COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, Director Justin Cates. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Justin Cates, Director of Emergency Management for the City of Nashua. Um, I just wanted to uh, briefly describe some of the actions that uh, we're currently undertaking with the Emergency Management Office as we start to move into the recovery phase of this uh, crisis. Uh, over the past uh, few months, our office has been engaged in our virtual emergency operations center uh, day in and day out, uh, working to coordinate resources, information, uh, and working with our state uh, business and nonprofit partners here within the city. I, uh, I think uh, the teamwork that's been encountered during this crisis has been remarkable when we look at uh, the many challenges that have been brought forth to the city. Uh, and everybody's worked really well together uh, as we've tried to move into a stable environment. Uh, hopefully people feel like they've got a little more control over their daily activities now that uh, the cases are starting to diminish. Uh, but I do want to reiterate that uh, this isn't over, uh, and that leads us into the next phase of our planning, which is looking at uh, the next couple of months and what a potential second wave might look like for COVID-19. One of the things that uh, we did uh, as a part of our response was look to see what types of resources we might have available to us to help provide surge capacity to our office as well as to public health. Um, there were a couple of programs that we identified and, and learned about uh, that would bring in additional staff members to our, our teams to assist us with that planning for a second wave. Uh, two of those programs are starting to come uh, to fruition now. Uh, the first one being uh, the New Hampshire COVID-19 Community Care Corps, which was a program established by Representative Matt Wilhelm as well as the Goodwill uh, Northern New England. Uh, this is a program that leverages uh, Corporation for National Community Services resources, also known as AmeriCorps, uh, to come to municipalities as well as nonprofit organizations across the Granite State uh, to assist them in building capacity for COVID-19, particularly in those vulnerable populations and low-income populations. Uh, so I actually want to introduce our three uh, COVID-19 Community Care Corps members that will be serving. They just started this week. Uh, we have Charlotte Perry, we have Corinne Prestia, and we have Tara Murphy. Uh, the three of them will be working to uh, identify nonprofits in the community that have provided services to our vulnerable populations uh, to assist them with emergency planning uh, and make sure that they're prepared as a nonprofit to continue those services in a second wave. Uh, they'll be working uh, full-time over the next uh, few months, which will be a big help to us in the Office of Emergency Management. We've, uh, it's just been Elise Butterworth and I, the two uh, staff members, so having some additional help on hand will be great, especially as we start uh, to stabilize and get back into some normalcy. 
Um, and then uh, next Monday, we have our first uh, CDC Foundation uh, person who will uh, serve as a emergency management coordinator, really focused around looking at our existing emergency plans and making sure that they are essentially COVID compliant. So as an example, um, if we have an extreme heat event here within the city, there's uh, typically an approach that we use to uh, send residents who are in need of refuge from the heat to many of our community organizations that we partner with throughout the year. Unfortunately, uh, those locations are a bit challenged at this point with physical distancing and being able to provide intake to uh, members of the public. So one of the things that we'll need to do is revise our plans to operate in this new COVID environment when we look at physical distancing, sanitation, and all the other things that need to take place with it. So our two CDC Foundation um, folks will work uh, exclusively on assisting with the city's emergency plans, uh, both in our office as well as uh, public health when it comes to their emergency plans as well. Uh, CDC Foundation is also providing additional staffing support to the city, including public health nurses, uh, communication specialists to help with public messaging, um, and a, a number of other resources to the city. So I guess we could say that the Calvary has come now. We do have assistance. Uh, it's taken this long, but uh, we're really happy to see uh, these members that will be supporting the city over the next few months uh, to help us prepare for uh, what the future holds for COVID-19. Uh, to close us out, uh, I just want to continue to thank our uh, stakeholders here within the city, everyone ranging from the local businesses to our uh, nonprofits who have stepped up, uh, found ways to assist with the response effort, uh, even under these challenging circumstances, and have really made that whole response for the city uh, one to, to really look back on and say that we did a great job. Thank you. I'm here just to uh, conclude our presentation to you. Please send any questions you have to either the mayor's office or to public health city hall questions to the appropriate departments. We do have a virtual coffee with the mayor coming up a week from today at 8.30 a.m. That is, you'll be able to uh, at least access us via Facebook and you can participate uh, via via message in the town hall. We will be having the police chief as well as a member of Black Lives Matter there to give brief uh, remarks regarding how they are working together and then of course take any questions or comments that you, you may have. In any event, thank you for tuning in and we will see you again when, uh, shortly when we do our next update.